Hello, Gay Gay, can you hear me? Okay. Okay, Gay Gay, I just want to unmute you. Gay Gay Gay, can you hear me? Okay, I can start hearing you. Um, speak a little bit louder again. All right, can you hear me? Yes, that is much better then. Yeah, perfect. Okay, I see a few people has joined Pietres and I think the rest is probably still coming. Yep. Okay, so I think um yeah, I think let's start it. Let's let's get the, the moment going and I think um before I introduce you, um I think uh, I, I put myself into a challenge this year by climbing Kilimanjaro until I've heard your story. And uh, I got then inspired by, you know, that you climbed Kilimanjaro and I saw your book the other day. So I, I'm looking forward to receiving my copy. And uh, yeah, of course. Yeah, I think um, if we can start maybe uh, before I, I get to too much detail about my life, I just want to say it is an honor to have you on this uh, call this evening and to learn from you and to learn from your story and to learn where you came from as a person, what made you want to climb Kilimanjaro you know why why why, why that crazy thought you know my life um, people say I am crazy people say um, uh, what Kubis, why why Kubis? and I think yeah. in your story you will probably share with us you know the moment you got onto the top of uh, of the of the mountain and you look down and realize wow I climbed Kilimanjaro um, just for those who are looking to, to that are on this call with us this morning, after this evening, is that I, I'm born as a hemophilia, and so I have no joints. You know, I don't even have elbow joints. I don't have ankle joints. And about two years ago, I was in a wheelchair, and I wasn't being able to walk. And the only way I could get um, myself going forward was to put myself into uh, this goal, this vision of climbing Kilimanjaro. So, KK, over to you. I'm going to have this to you. Please share with us. And I'm in the end of the uh, chat, let me know. And then we can start some Q&A and uh, take it from there. All right, great. Um, thank you very much for the opportunity. Uh, I, I, I don't know if you remember, though. Um, I, I actually did one of your firewalks about, about two, three years ago. <laughs> so that was brilliant uh, you know you are an inspiration to me as well you know considering all the all the challenges you've, you 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 were born with uh, you know some of the things that you had to go through uh, even your failures which is something that I love that you share a lot uh, you know you talk a lot about your failures and it's something that I, I like to embrace as well because it's such a beautiful learning experience for all of us um, I hope you can hear me all right, fantastic. I just want to say hi to Pete Nell, Petras Nell, and Dr. Alexandra Evachrun as well, who are, I know both are, are listening in. Thanks, guys, for joining in. Um, guys, this is somebody else that uh, you really need to know. Um, Corbus Fisser is really an inspiration, and, and I think, um, you know, I also love your humility, bro. You know, you're such an amazing guy. I learned from you as well, and uh, again, thanks for the opportunity. So, you know, in, in, in maybe telling people a, a little bit about who I am, you know, I'm an ordinary guy at the end of the day. You know, I'm somebody who was born on the farm. And in the book that you mentioned, The Climb, really talks about that. You know, I wrote that book to really uh, talk about who I am as an individual, where I come from, where I was born, the kind of challenges that I really grew up with. Um, you know, considering I, I come from a broken family, my, kid, uh, my, my parents divorced, um, you know, when I was in my first year of college. Um, you know, it, it really broke the family apart, uh, literally. And, um, you know, worse things happened to my brother as a consequence. You know, I've had my own struggles. Um, I had my, you know, business failure way, way back then in the past. You know, I struggled to see my kids, um, you know, things like I actually write about those things in the book. So I guess what I'm trying to create a context around is I'm a human being. I'm, I'm an ordinary person like everybody else. I'm, I'm not Superman. Um, and so me having achieved the things that I've achieved, including having climbed Mount Kilimanjaro, is not because I'm made of, of something uh, different than, than the next person. And I think during this call, we are going to talk about some of those things and how I started you know, thinking differently about how to, how to I guess, 
pursue the challenges and, and not just for myself, because in, you know, the, the crazy thing about, about me having pursued climbing Mount Kilimanjaro was not necessarily just for me to test myself, but it was to teach a lesson. You know, and more than anything, I say it was to rob people of the excuses. That is literally the reason why I climbed Mount Kilimanjaro. So as a business coach, you know, I, I come across a lot of entrepreneurs, a lot of business people, um, aspiring young people who want to either start a business or even pursue uh, a professional career. And there are two excuses that you, have, you hear a lot. One of them is, you know, people, yes, they are facing challenges. One of those excuses is that, we don't have money, you know, we don't have money to start a business. And the second one is I don't have experience. You know, I don't have experience to go into, um, you know, consulting, or I don't have experience to go into engineering or whatever the case may be, or I don't have money to go to college or to start my business. And because I preach uh, principles, you know, I speak and teach principles on how people can overcome those challenges uh, in my line of work, um, I realized that continuing to do the same thing over and over again and expecting different results, you know, would be insanity, as Einstein puts it. And so what I then decided to do at the time was what, what different avenue can I use that will help me teach a, a more, I guess, a, a, more, a more impactful lesson um, around how people can overcome these challenges. And so what I did is I said, you know, let me pursue an extreme goal, right? A, a goal that is way bigger than myself and also not to use my own money because because I'd be cheating at the end of the day because what I wanted to do is I wanted to show the young people and obviously that you know the grown-ups out there that you can achieve you know uh, massive goals in your life without experience without the resources and so I took on the journey then to to climb on Kilimanjaro in order to rob people of, the, of those excuses and to show them that you know any one of us can achieve great goals as long as you follow certain principles and so, and I know we'll, we'll come back to this, but um, I eventually climbed Mount Kilimanjaro on my first attempt. And the whole idea was, let me learn certain principles and lessons that I will then come back and teach people when, on my return. And so in retrospect, when I came back, there were five principles that I, that, I, that I then discovered that without those five principles, I wouldn't have made it up that mountain. You know, and, and I guess we, we'll maybe unpack what those what those principles are, but maybe let me just quickly list them. The first one was purpose. You know, have a have a compelling purpose that's going to 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 help drive you to 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 overcome challenges when you pursue your your goals. Um, and the next one is leadership. Leadership is not necessarily about leading other people. The very first person you must lead is yourself. And so self leadership and obviously leading others was a very big component or that, that enabled me to 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 summit. And then thirdly, value proposition. I think we, we sometimes, we sometimes um, in inverted commas, you know, underestimate the importance of us demonstrating a value proposition to ourselves and to other people. So, and, and maybe let me unpack that a little bit. What I did for a few years while I was trying to raise sponsorships was that I, uh, you know, I was speaking to different sponsors and telling them about how I'm trying to inspire young people, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then they were not buying my story. And then I realized that my value proposition was wrong. It really wasn't about what I was trying to achieve. But in every instance, the value proposition has to be relevant to the other person that you're speaking to. And so I needed to, to, to define a value proposition and to present a value proposition to my sponsors that will, that, that will help them buying into the cause and therefore support me in order to help me, you know, uh, find the project so I can ultimately summit on Kilimanjaro. So, and maybe we can touch on that a little bit later. But the, 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 the key lesson there is as people, we forget the importance of being able to articulate a value proposition for the other person, not just for ourselves. And then um, fourth principle was relationships. I couldn't have done this on my own. You know, uh, one of my favorite African proverbs says, you know, if, if, if you want to go, if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go with others. And without relationships, I couldn't have achieved the success that I achieved. For one, you know, it was a one man climb, i.e. it was myself going to climb that mountain. But without the people who helped me to share the costs as a group, I wouldn't have made it out there. Without the sponsors, I wouldn't have made it out there. And more importantly, without the, the, the people who needed to guide me up the mountain, I wouldn't have made it up there. So the kind of relationships I think that we need to develop and cultivate is extremely important. 
Um, and then just lastly, my last principle was really, um, you know, all about commitment. You know, what kind of, what kind of emotional, psychological commitment was I going to make to this journey? And I think uh, if I was just playing, <laughs> if I wasn't serious, I wasn't making the right kind of commitment, I honestly wouldn't have made it out there. And, and another perspective around commitment is sometimes we expect other people to commit to us first before we commit to them even though the journey and the goal and the mission is ours. And so that was one of the things that I needed to learn. Um, and I, again, I do share it in the book and I also share it in the talks that I do around um, this talk called Climb Your Mountain. So just from a context perspective, that was my journey. And yeah, it was <laughs> the single most life-changing journey uh, and experience of my life. And I, you know, I, again, I appreciate you helping me uh, relive that experience, Kobus. Uh, thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Um, because it's, it's, I think it's very important. We as a group at the moment is also climbing Kilimanjaro. And I've set it out to inspire people to show them that what is possible. And, uh, and especially I think what you just shared, those, some, some of those learnings are, 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 impa are very important. Um, first, you have to find the purpose. And, and that's why our hashtag for climbing Kilimanjaro is Kili on Purpose. Because, you know, like you just said, you know, if you don't have a purpose, um, what's going to drive you? What is, becomes your why? What becomes your must? Because I, f I believe that is what fuels you to, to reach that top. Um, and then leadership. I think it's very important. Uh, you're the first one that I've found that said it. You know, you first you have to lead you. Because yeah. my whole principle in life is about you can only give what you have. So if you want to lead, lead people, you need to know how to lead yourself. And then I, I think we can touch a little bit on it, the value proposition, so that I can share it with my group. Um, yeah. How did you go about to sponsoring yourself for this trip? You know, it's not only about sponsoring yourself for this trip, but I think there's a lot of lessons people can learn in this, that maybe to raise funds for their business, to raise funds for nonprofit organizations. What are some principles you think that helped you to make this uh, dream of yours a reality? So the, the cornerstone, honestly, from a business tr and, 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 and I guess social transactional perspective, I needed to come up with a value proposition that's, that would help somebody else or, or convince somebody else to buy into what I was selling to them, right? And the same principle applies in business. The same principle applies in relationships. Uh, it pretty much uh, applies across the spectrum. I mean, you look at animals in nature, if you don't add value to your tribe, you know, to your, to your pack um, and to your, you know, your group, you, you literally get kicked out, you know, because if you, if you are just thinking about coming into a group or into a community just to consume and to take and to take and not give anything back, uh, you know, the system will spit you back out. But anyway, the point is we need to define a, what a compelling value proposition. And maybe let me give you the meaning of, um, you know, of value proposition. One of the dictionary definitions is a value proposition is um, a group, a, a bundle of benefits and advantages, right? That somebody um, will benefit uh, from interacting with you or from or interacting with your business. So I needed to, to find a way of how can I get sponsors to buy into, into this, this trip, this journey. So you mentioned sponsoring myself. Remember, the whole, the whole idea was not to use my own money. So I can show people who don't have money that, hey, if you have a valid um, and compelling enough reason, you can literally get somebody else to help you start your business or to, to, to get somebody to make that f first order with you. But your value proposition has to be compelling. And so this whole time I kept saying, hey, I want to inspire young people. I want to inspire young people. It didn't work until I flipped that value proposition. And then I what I promised to the companies that, and the individuals that sponsored me was, look, I can give you something else that nobody else can give you. you know, I can take you where nobody else can, can take you, and I can take you where your competition will probably never get to. Uh, and if they do get there, at least you would have been there first. And that would be to take you to the highest part of the African continent. That was my value proposition. So now I wasn't speaking about myself, what I was trying to do, but I was speaking to their aspiration. You know, something they would love to do, which is to be seen as a company that's on the highest part of the African continent, which was on the summit of Mount Kilimanjaro. And so when I offered that value proposition, it hit where it mattered most, which is emotionally in their hearts. Mm. 
and, and then they also bought into the idea of then supporting you know, the, the initiative and then seeing beyond just the, the value proposition, but then seeing that behind this initiative, there are other people that are being supported, other people that, that, that are human beings just like them, and they also have aspirations and they need to be inspired in order to move to the next level. So in sharing what that value proposition is, find out what your potential sponsor would want to achieve, would want to gain out of dealing with you. And then you offer them that particular, that particular value proposition. I think that is powerful. But I think if I had to bring in, and I think it's like Tony Robbins says, um, emotion creates emotion. And so, but, but, and, and I think that is what you want to create in people. You want to move them basically. But now, now that's what the po first part is. Now you create, now you have the sponsors. Now, how do you prepare yourself on a feat like this? Because I think you can compare this to business as well. You know, facing that, opening up a first business is that fear. You, you, you just don't go climb a, a Kilimanjaro and decide I'm going to do it tomorrow. Or even if you decide it, it's like, tomorrow I'm going to start a business. If you're not prepared, yeah. if, you, if you fail to prepare, you're prepared to fail. So tell us quickly in, in a broad sense, how did you prepare for Kilimanjaro? And then while you're talking as well, how was the journey? Was it easy as everyone thinks it is? Is every day easy, like in life? Or does it become challenging over time? So let me maybe start with um, the, 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 you know, the, the, the later part of the question that you asked, how easy it was. and. I'm amazed at, you know, I, I thought it would be difficult. I thought it would be one of the most, you know, challenging feasts ever in my life, right? But because of the reasons why I was doing it, the purpose um, that was driving me, and, and, and the, you know, and the overall, I think, openness that I had uh, towards this goal itself, it was easy until that very last day, right? The preparations were there. You know, I could have prepared a whole lot more and I do sh share some of the things that I had left out uh, that led to, 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 to that, could have, that could have been detrimental to my own, uh, to my own trip and the summit, i.e. I, I didn't prepare as much as I could have prepared. But physically, I was ready. You know, I'm not the most, the, the most physically active of, of people, uh, but... You know, I, I, it, I, took my, I took my time and I, I put an effort in ensuring that I, that I prepared for the trip, that I prepared for the summit, you know, and, and we'll come back to that. What I want to touch on is that when I mention about the fact that just because you don't have experience in a particular field or your business or whatever the case may be, doesn't mean that you, you must literally just open your doors and start your business today without doing your research, without doing your planning, without speaking to people like, you know, the, 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 the Petrus Nell of this world and uh, Dr. Alexandra um, Evergroen to, to find out, you know, the, the journey that they have traveled, right? So you can learn from their mistakes, learn from their successes, learn from their failures and let people like them guide you. Do your research, you know, uh, in business, we say, you know, develop your, your, your minimum viable product before you launch, right? Before you overinvest so that you can minimize your risk. And it's the same thing uh, with Kilimanjaro. I needed to go and see if I could climb the little copies around the corner, you know, if I could, if I could hike five kilometers. And, and you know what? One of the most testing things about Kilimanjaro is how slow you must walk. You, you understand what I'm saying? Because, because we in this fast-paced um, you know, society where we want everything right here, right now. It, it was amazing to learn how you need to slow yourself down if you want to go further, if you want to reach your goal. You know, baby steps count a lot. They they count very much, especially in these kind of these kind of feasts, these kind of uh, missions, so to speak. You know, so we did prepare. You know, there were a couple of weekends that. Um, you know, my, my, my mentors took me out on, 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 on different hikes. Um, you know, I made sure I needed to get my boots months before, right? And, and I think that's a great metaphor for preparation is on Kili, if you want to survive, just like in business, get your boots. Get your boots first, wear them in before you hit the ground running, 
you know, because if you really want to get blisters, you know, <laughs> if you want to avoid blisters, make sure you do that. And the same thing applies in business. If you want to avoid failure, great failure, if you want to avoid, you know, mistakes that can easily be avoided, start early, research, do your planning, speak to people, find mentors. Um, and, and lastly, I just want to say that, you know, one of the most uh, beautiful things that I experienced in my preparations that ultimately led to me um, succeeding and, 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 and summiting Kili, I was coached and mentored by five beautiful women. You know, it was just women. It was only women in the team of people that guided me up to the mountain, you know, until I eventually got to Tanzania. And, you know, the story is a little different over there. It sounds like you um, had nice motivation, you know. <laughs> and that was fantastic. Motivation you know? Like that. Yeah, yeah. That's so easy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, it did. It but did, again, did. that also brings you back to who you surround yourself with, you know, that motivates you. You surround yourself with the right people, if they're beautiful or not. But if yeah. they take you forward and if they move you forward, you know, then you have to surround yourself. Like you are surrounding yourself with uh, Pietrus and Alexander, you know, that is, yeah. you know, you can only excel. There's no way you can't. And, and I think if you have to tell me, you said that last day is the most challenging. Mm -hmm. Just quickly share with everyone, how did it feel when you got to the top? Um, when you had to look down and everything and it, you, you made it. Yeah. So maybe let me, let me just take a couple of steps back, right? Um, one of the most important things about climbing Kili is to avoid looking at the summit as much as you can, right? And the reason you want to do that is because you want to stop being overwhelmed by how big that mountain is. You know, whether that mountain is a literal mountain or whether it's a goal that you are trying to achieve. Stop looking up there all the time because it's going to overwhelm you. Face down and look at every step that you need to take, number one, to ensure you don't fall. You know, have your plan, have your big goals in life, but you need to focus here today. You know, you need to focus on the tasks that will ultimately get you there. And, and another, you know, interesting metaphor uh, that I, I, I now like to apply in business is when you climb on Kili, in order to get acclimatized is you, you climb up, right? But we sleep low right so we climb up so that we can get used to the climate but however in order for our bodies to 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 not be shocked by sleeping up too high um in, in terms of the altitude we have to sleep low and i think that's one of the things that a lot of us in business understand is that you know things don't go smooth like that in life and in business you know there are ups and downs ups and downs right that's one of the things that i really enjoyed about one kilimanjaro but back to the last day um you know, you never know how altitude, especially as high as Mount Kilimanjaro is, you don't know how, how much is going to affect you until you are actually there, right? It's difficult to, to, to literally prepare for that last day because the best way to see how that last day is going to affect you is to actually be on that mountain, right? And anyway, the story was, Almost every day we needed to obviously sleep in our clothes because in the night it is bloody cold, right? Balaclavas and all, right? Your buffs over your nose, you know, two pairs of gloves. It was very interesting. And I'm, and I'm a guy who likes to keep warm even when I'm here in Joburg, you know what I mean? <laughs> so I was very uh, pleasantly surprised that I was able to take the, the cold up there. It isn't, it isn't major um, life-destroying type of cold obviously depending on what time of the year you go. So we went to the very uh, great time of the year, which was in August, you know, it wasn't rainy, it wasn't wet, you know, during the day on some days it, it was pretty sunny and I would, would just be in my t-shirt. But that last day, bro, I think we got up at, so we were, we were, we were advised to sleep um, at, at six, seven, right? Early evening, because we were going to get up at 10, 11 to start climbing right you know that last summit is literally one kilometer guess how long it took us to walk that one last kilometer it took us about 10 hours 10 hours one kilometer because of how slow we need to walk right the lack of oxygen up there i mean it isn't completely zero oxygen but 
you know, there isn't as much oxygen as a, as a couple of um, uh, kilometers uh, further down. It was the coldest night, the coldest experience I've, I've, I've ever been through. I mean, that last day, you wear three, literally you wear three pairs of pants, right? You wear your fleece pants, um, you wear skiing pants, and obviously your cargo pants, so you are able to, you know, uh, you use your different pockets to be able to carry all the different um, items you may need to. Um, I was wearing two pairs of socks, obviously my boots, and feet warmers, you know, those heat packs. Yeah, we needed to put heat packs in our gloves. I needed to wear two pairs of, of, of gloves, and I was wearing maybe five, six different layers, right? Uh, and then two, a hat and a balaclava. It was extremely cold. But I really don't want to scare anyone off and say that, um, you know, don't go because it's extremely cold. It's just, it's the coldest night, you know, on the mountain that very last night. Um, it took us about 10 to 12 hours to, yes, to, to walk that last, that last kilometer. And the water that you carry literally freezes. <laughs> so it's also important to get the right kind of bottles and to, to flip them upside down while you're carrying them. Right. If you're not carrying the the, you know, the the tubes that that, that lead in it directly into your mouth, you carry them upside down so that when they freeze, at least you can still open the bottle and suck in whatever little bit of water is closer to the to the cap. So that was very interesting. And we are advised to drink a lot of water, not only um, at the top but throughout the journey. And one of the most interesting things was how how the the guides, you know, were. We're, we're not, not drinking water. So it's important to drink the right amount of water or else it can actually weaken you, you know, when you're up there. And at about four or five in the morning, I think we were, we were maybe 70% um, on the way. The most beautiful sunrise I've ever experienced was coming up um, from the east, obviously. And it was, it was amazing. Um, and it took us another five hours or so to get to the summit. And when we got there, each and every one of us cried like babies, you know, because of how beautiful it was and how tough that one kilometer was, right? It was, you know, I, I, I honestly struggle to always think back of how it was and to be able to talk about it. But all I can say, it was the most amazing thing I've ever experienced in my entire life. Wow. Um, that, yeah, that is amazing. And, and, and it's good you tell me that because I have to prepare myself mentally to, to get to that point. But I think um, all that learnings you get, you know, from doing that, I think it's the same in business. How many times do people give up in business on that last stretch? And, and they're yeah. so close of making it. And then yet they give up. And how many were you in your group, if you had to tell me, um, um, okay, okay, how many were you in your group that in, in summited? And how long did you go and what route did you choose? So remember it was a one man climb, right? And so all the campaigning I was doing, I was doing on my own, you know, all the fundraising, all the preparations. I, I didn't train with the group that I eventually went with. I, I trained with, with uh, Mamtandi. Mamtandi Nlovu is, is the owner, the CEO and owner of Mutewo Construction, one of the most successful construction companies in the country. Um, and one of the things that, that really surprised me about how successful this woman is, she, she, you know, she, she didn't know who I am from above soap, but she made the time. And I really love people like Mamtandi, you know, the, the Pete's and, and, and the Alexanders of this world, multimillionaires, but they make time for the ordinary folks like the rest of us, you know? So what then happened was, um, sorry, I just, I just lost my trail of thought. I think I'm just, you know, no, taken by, by it. By, by, by just how, how, how beautiful this whole experience was. Yes. Um, so, so when we were, when we were, um, Gomez, please just, just remind me, just remind me. <laughs> um, yeah, I, what I was talking about was about how, what, do, what route did you climb? Did you also climb the Machami we took, route? We took the Machami route, which is, I, I, it's a route that I honestly um, say, I think is the best route because the longer you take on the mountain, it's five days to climb up right, all the way up to the summit from Machami Gate. The longer you take, the more your body acclimatizes, right? It, it's important to take that route. If you take a, a route that's shorter, some of your people may struggle with that because they, don't, they won't have as much time in order to acclimatize. All right, so it's, it's important to do that. 
Yeah, it's luckily um, we, we, we're taking seven days actually to plant, total nine days. So we're actually taking two more longer days, nice. especially nice. because of that. And because of my ankles, you know, I'm taking crutches yeah. with and I'm, I'm at the point where I want to, I will crawl <laughs> to get to the top. You know, there's no way of turning back. Um, and it's one step at a time, man. And, yeah. and so back, back to the number of people, I, you know, I, I was trained by people who had climbed Kili before. And then I literally only met my group on the plane. Right, uh, Malcolm from not your Malcolm, <laughs> Malcolm um, who's uh, who runs uh, some adventures. Um, you know, he was one of the people who 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 also contributed. Um, he he reduced the rates that I needed to pay. Um, he introduced me to the group that he knew was going. I met some amazing people uh, in a group. There, there were twelve of them, right? Um, and and so I joined the group on the last day. They had told me about this group, and we just could never. Um, get our dates together in order for us to meet before um, and then so I met them on the plane wonderful people and um, all of us submitted except for one for one lady and my but there was years ago so I from my, my understanding is I think she went a year or two later and she also got to summit and to experience what we all experienced um, and and so yeah it was it was a 99% success rate and I think we all gelled so well when we when we were there um, it, and I don't think you can, you can avoid that, you know, because when you go up there, the mountain strips you of whatever ego you have, <laughs> you know, everybody's equal on that mountain, you know? Um, and I, I talk about this in the book as well. You get to a point where, bro, they are toilets, you know, you're going to literally pull your pants down and do your thing right in front of other people. You understand what I'm saying? Because number one, you can't walk that far off, right? Not because it's dangerous, but you want to preserve your energy. I mean, it's a clean mountain, but they do have uh, long drop toilets, et cetera, et cetera. But where I come from, we, you know, we used to use long drop toilets. So it wasn't, it wasn't a new experience for me, but it was beautiful to watch all of these people from the four ways, from the Santon Northern suburbs, you know, who are used to automatic flushing toilets. And now they needed to use uh, uh, long drop toilets like <laughs> like the rural areas and the poor people in, in, in this country and, and, and obviously other countries. No, but, that's but anyway. amazing. And I think yeah. that, is a, that, that strips you of your ego. And, and that's yeah. the reason, <laughs> if I have to laugh, why our, the package we choose, they take a portable toilet for you. <laughs> <laughs> so we make sure i make sure that i have something to sit on <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> nice nice but you can sit on a long drop bro <laughs> yeah yeah so uh, and i think it's amazing on this route on my route mm -hmm. i just want you to share with people there's two things there's the branco wall and then the yes. kissing rock yes how was that experience so, okay so one of the one of the dumbest things that i did right um, and I, I don't remember if it was, it, I don't think it was intentional at all, right? Was I, there were forms that I forgot to complete and these were my insurance forms, right? So please make sure everybody signs the insurance forms, right? Um, obviously, you know, lot, uh, lot forbid nothing bad happens, but you want to prepare just like in business, just like in life. You want to ensure that, uh, you know, your insurance is nice and, 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 and ready should you need it. So as we were, um, you know, hiking towards uh, the Barranco wall. Um, that was day two, day two, day three. Um, I had always been walking and hiking behind my group, but that time, for some reason, I ended up in the front, right? And halfway to, Bar to the Barranco wall, I then, there, there were, I could see boulders, freestanding boulders, big rocks, right? And I wanna try and see where my team is. And I think, yeah, I, I tried to see where they were. And then I climbed on the boulders. Bro, I fell from on top of the boulders. I created a risk myself, right? And it, it's, it's one of the things I would say, some rocks look very solid, but you never know which one is not. And you don't want to find out while you're on top of it. But I was, I was lucky that I, that, that I was able to spring off the rock completely or else it would have crushed both my legs if I hadn't done that. So that was a stupid mistake. Uh, people need to be careful on the mountain. It's not, it's not a, 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 a mountain that you literally, that you climb as such. It's actually a, a hike. It's a walk, you know, 
that's also something that's important for people to understand that you don't use picks and axles and everything to 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 climb this mountain you know including the 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 the, the, the kissimmee which is um one of the most, the scariest things i love taking pictures off the wall um because when you're down at the bottom you know there, there's different groups right one of the most beautiful things to experience was all the different colors um, of clothing that people obviously wear on the mountain and you could see a beautiful swerving line that goes up against the wall um, and then um, somebody dropped the bag right on the wall while they were climbing um, and again also it's not necessarily such a climb with pixels it's it's a it's a it's a hike up the mountain but it's very steep right and uh, 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 they dropped a bag and then two of the porters, you know, got very creative and they put some, you know, some, some, um, some slings together and they, you know, they literally put one uh, around one guy's, one guy's uh, waist and they lowered him down, you know, to get, to get the bag. And that spoke to commitment, bro. It wasn't their bags. This was one of the climbers bags. Those guys were phenomenal, you know, phenomenal. And I want to quickly talk about how, you know, when we climb these, when we go as, as tourists, right, um, as visiting uh, climbers, you know, we, we all nicely dressed. We've got these boots, we've got these, um, you know, this equipment and all of this gear. Some of the guys are climbing that mountain with sandals and shorts. Sandals and shorts, bro. And they have climbed that mountain over a hundred times, but they're most, the most humble people and they risk themselves, you know, to you know, to, to help us who are trying to climb for the first time. So it was one of the most inspirational things to, to experience as well. And, and that's why I want to come with you now, um, because um, I think in the sense is now after the mountain and I like learnings like that about the porters. Yeah. What has happened since then? I know you've written a book, but how is this helping you to teach businesses to, uh, yeah. to grow? How, did you con how, how does it help you to connect with influential people? How's your life changed since then? And what is the learnings that you could take from it? Because I think it's important, like yeah. with the porters. And in life, there's going to be people at the bottom that's going to help you to get somewhere. And we sometimes mistake them when we take advantage of them and we yeah. forget about them. So uh, let's quickly, um, because we've been on for a while. So let's go to the end now so that we can have questions. But sure. from the mountain till now. So so you, you touched on a... On a, on a uh, I guess a beautiful concept around people at the bottom, you know, pushing you up. And at the other end, I also have had these multimillionaires who were also just as humble. So I had this contrast of two different types of people, you know, who come from different, different lifestyle, who live different lifestyles were supporting me. So it, it was one of the most beautiful things to, to experience. You know, I tell people this all the time. When I went up that mountain, I literally died. I literally died and came back a completely new person. What you are seeing now is a completely different person to the one that took a very first steps through the Machami gate and up that mountain. So it literally changed me. So much so that when I came back, I, at the time I had a staff compliment of 14 people, right? And because of the first thing I have to mention is about 10 of those people had made a commitment with me to climb Mount Kili, but none of them came with me because they needed to raise their own money. I wasn't going to try and make things easy for anyone who was going to climb that mountain. If I wasn't going to make it easy for myself, I wasn't going to make it easy for anybody else. Right. But when I came back, it took me about a month or two to be in a position where I realized I was in a group of the wrong kind of people. I literally disbanded that entire team of 14 people, which was a, a, a big pride of a, a big pride of mine to have grown my business up to a, a place where I could employ 14 people. Right? But because I realized who I, who I had become, who I needed to become in order to reach the next summit in my life, I needed to disband you know, the groups. I needed to, to choose new people in my life. You know how they say, you know, the average, the, the five people you hang around with, you become the average of that. Right? So that was one of the things I realized I needed to change in my life because I was aiming higher right and i had been planning to write books for years but then when i came back from Kili, it took me three weeks to finish a book 
right? I put this book together, and then when people ask me to 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 talk about my 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 journey um, up up Kili, you know, it it was something that I I I've always I've obviously always been a coach, a trainer, and a facilitator of programs, but it was different to stand in front of people to then talk about something you have achieved that they hadn't, you know. You know, one of the groups that I spoke to was was Ellerins, the Ellerins group. You remember this multi-billion rand annual turnover company had had been falling. They were holding on to their last, you know, little bit. Bro, they called me to come and talk to them about their rest of Africa strategy. You know, they had obviously failed in South Africa, but they were so inspired by this story and my journey and my talk where, where they had experienced it before. They called the, the, you know, the leaders from the different countries in Southern Africa and they asked me, you know, to facilitate a, 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 a say an inspirational strategy session for them. It was, it, it was humbling to be in that position, but then I realized the power that I had in the experiences that I was creating for people. Um, and since then, the levels of commitments that I make, you know, the, the decisiveness that I, that I'm able to decide on something very specific. Um, again, it made me a completely new person. You know, if you ask me today to do something, I'm not afraid to tell you no. You know, if anybody asks me, that's one of the biggest things that I learned is I learned to say no, you know, and they say your wealth comes more from the things you say no to than the things you say yes to. And again, it was one of the things that I learned, you know, my life completely changed, bro. And since then, I've published three books. I'm working on my fourth one. You know, I meet and hang around with people like yourself. I can walk on fire as well, you know. Uh, and as much as I might be guiding and leading other people, I've learned to be guided as well and to be led by other people. You know, all these amazing people in my life, I'm truly blessed, you know, since having climbed that mountain. I'm able to touch people's lives, to inspire, to lead, um, to motivate you know, and, and, and to, I'm, I'm fearless right now. And I know, you know what that feels like, you know, but that, that, that summit made me that person, you know, I had always wanted to be that person, but it was that journey that took me up there, up to the, to the summit that eventually made me this person. And just lastly, you know, the, the Swahili people, the people in Tanzania call that mountain, the house of God. I literally met God when I got up there you know, and he removes the old me and I came back a new person. So that was it for me. Yo, that's amazing. I even get uh, goosebumps just thinking about uh, what you just said, the house of God and meeting God. And, uh, and I think now is the journey ahead. What is ahead of for you now going forward? I know you're writing the fourth book, but there's two of your yes. friends on here as well, Petrus and Alexander. Yes. What, I see you planning something as well, you know, so where is this going um, and what is the plans? So, we, you know, I, I was lucky to have been through, again, through the relationships and the connections that I was able to make over the last few years, I was introduced. Uh, Pete had always been watching, uh, you know, following me, you know, he, he'd always seen some of the things that I've been uh, involved in. We, we'd, we'd met many years ago and we reconnected recently through another friend of ours in Spain, uh, uh, Derek Barber, who then introduced, officially introduced me properly to, uh, to, to Pietro Snell and, and Dr. Alexandra um, Evercroon, who are amazing individuals they're amazing entrepreneurs they've achieved you know you know i i've achieved this much compared to the lot that they have and i'm truly humbled with you know with, with what they've they've invited me to be part of so on the 26th of may we've got an amazing event um called the mind of a millionaire right a lot of people want to succeed in life right and the the first thing that one needs to change in order to 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 achieve goals is all in here in the same way that I couldn't do the same stupid workshops that I used to do in the past in order to, to inspire people to achieve big goals, I needed to, to risk my life like I did and to climb Kili in order to change people's minds. And so these two gentlemen have invited me to be one of four speakers. Um, uh, Pamela Niemant is one of the speakers as well. I'm really looking forward to meeting her in person. But, but again, I'm, I'm amazed and just humbled and inspired to be part of this event again the event is called mind of a millionaire and uh, if you don't mind i can quickly just share the link you know for people who are um, yes please who share with it i think i, I know pamela niemand and she's also walked on fire so that is nice that Wonderful. you have some uh, lady influence there um but also um, where can people get all of you uh, uh, for this event if they're interested because i'm going to upload this i'm going to share it with everyone that said they can't make it so that yeah. they can watch this video as well 
Um, Fantastic. Appreciate it. So, so, I mean, people can get a hold of me uh, via social media. My email address, um, info at kkdias.co.za. Uh, pretty easy. Um, and sorry, let me just quickly find that link. K, uh, info at kkdias.co.za. And I'm on Facebook, kkdiazsa. Uh, on Twitter, it's kkdiaz underscore um, sa. And uh, on LinkedIn, just look for, for KK Diaz and uh, I should be the only guy there. <laughs> Is it? Okay. Yeah, I'm just quickly finding the, the So link why are you finding that link? While we um, speak, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. I think uh, what, one thing that I want to do on the mountain, I just want to ask you if you think it will be possible. Uh, I want to take in broken glass with me. Okay. Yeah. So I want to do a sort of a world record attempt. I want to walk on, on top of the mountain on broken glass. Do you think that would oh. be possible? So you thinking at, at which stage of the mountain would you were you thinking of doing this? I'm thinking uh, well probably at the summit. I'm not going to take uh, uh, a lot of glass, just enough for a porter okay. to carry. Um, okay. Um, so to take it, can you take off your shoes at the summit? Yeah. Look, once once you've summited, you know, I think you get about an hour, maybe maybe yeah, just over an hour, you know, of time of being up there once you've summited. And I think I think once you've arrived, bro. You know, you, you can go crazy and do and, and do something like that. I think it would be an amazing experience. It would be an amazing record, actually. So yeah, I, I'd say yeah, you know, do it. Okay, no, 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 I'm looking forward to that. I mean, I think if you would love, uh, um, is there anyone that is on now that would love to ask questions? But I also would love you to introduce um, your two friends, uh, uh, Pietrus and uh, Alexander, and if they want to just introduce themselves, that would be great. So people can just know yeah. who you surround think- yourself with. You know. Fantastic. Thanks. I think give them an opportunity to speak for themselves so they can truly do do justice to that. Pietras, do you want to go first? Great. I'll do that. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Great. Fantastic. Well done, KK. What an inspiration. You You actually had me in a few tears there at one stage. And I can really relate with uh, I was just writing down here now. I've climbed my own mountains in, in my life uh, in business. Um, and as you mentioned, um, serial entrepreneur. And it's, it's an honor to, to, to be listening to you once again. I've listened to the story uh, before. And man, it's, it's really expiring. And going on this journey with yourself and Alexander with the mindset of a millionaire, absolutely it, it's heartwarming to, to have such great minds and great people on the same journey with the same mindsets and just listening to you with, with your experience with uh, climbing Kilimanjaro and what you've had to endure and all those little steps that you had to take to get to the summit. I mean, what you implement in business and what you give back to the people just by climbing that mountain is just absolutely insane information. And that's all from experience. Um, and I mean, same with me, same with Alexander. We talk out of experience. And it's just humbling to know that um, guys like you, with the experience um, that you've had on that mountain, um, that you share it and it, it touches so many people. And I mean, I can relate. Like I said just now, um, you actually had me in tears at, at two stages of your talk. Uh, really, really inspiring stuff. And Quibus as well. Uh, just listening to his story, a bit of his story, I would like to hear a lot more from Quibus. As, as I said to you earlier on, I, I've actually followed Quibus as well for a while. And um, I would like to hear more about um, uh, climbing this mountain with, with the, 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 the um, disabilities that, that he's got. It just yeah. blows my mind, um, really blows my mind. And what an inspirational story will come back from that mountain, from that summit, the day Quibus comes back into this country and what story is he going to share with us? Yeah. Um, absolutely fantastic and well done, guys. Absolutely Thank great. You. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity, guys. Thank you for that, Petrus. And if you, and I'm going to give it over to Alexander now, but if you and Alexander and the rest of us are listening, Saturday night, I'm doing a firewalk in Waverly Sports Club. So it's, oh, from, wow. it's from six o'clock till about 10 o'clock. So if you have open, please come as my guest. And then I'm going to share my story there as well. And, uh, you know, then you can come listen and we can meet in person. And then maybe if you are open 9th to 17th of July, there's still three months to go. You and Alexander might can might think to join us and climb Kilimanjaro with, you know. So think wow, about that. that. Yeah. That sounds brilliant. That sounds absolutely fantastic. 
Yeah, so I will send you the details uh, about it. But yeah, think about it. Um, you have right. a good mentor in KK that will prepare you to, to climb uh, <laughs> Kili. So mm -hmm. that is one thing. Um, so think about it if you are up for the challenge. Um, so, it sounds really good. Okay, so have you noted down? Also, also the same with you, Kubis. Um, if there's any way we can help um, in with with your your journey, uh, please. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Our hearts are open and our hands are open. 100%. Thank you for that. I would love to come visit you guys on the 26th to listen as well in your speaking. And I'm looking forward to that. And thank you, Pietro. Well, maybe you should come and speak with us. Well, if there's a spot, always, you know. But Great. yeah, sometimes I'm there to serve as well. Great. Nice. Okay, so Alexander, are you ready? Born ready, so... Uh... It's something that's in your mind, if you're ready enough. So firstly, uh, thank you very much, uh, Kobus, to give me the opportunity also to introduce myself. And KK, thank you for your amazing story. Uh, I already read a lot online about uh, the amazing journey you, uh, you took and you're taking, actually, and all of us taking uh, to going on to the Kilimanjaro. And actually, I'm using uh, in many of my speeches, not the Kilimanjaro, but I use the Mount Everest. Uh, there were some people going to the Mount Everest and I met a few people in Holland, and they were really struggling with themselves. And they also wanted to accomplish something. I said, listen, why are you not going for a mountain that is something that you can reach right now, and I will help you. And in Holland, you got one mountain, and they call it the Grobenberg, the Groben Mountain. And that mountain is only 300 meters high. But that lady was 138 kilo. So within six months, that lady went back to 92 kilo and went walking in a very, very fast pace. And, and conquered that mountain. And if you see the change in her life, but also in her family life, but just taking a small step, of course, every person has a dream to go to the Kilimanjaro and go to Mount Everest. But firstly, her budget was not there, and she never conquered anything further than, than the door, or to the supermarket, or to, uh, to a snack bar. And by changing people's mindset and taking small steps, it's not all uh, that you have to start and go to the top like what KK did and going to the Kilimanjaro and literally die on the mountain to be reborn and, and actually uh, figure out what, what life has to offer. And, and again, what KK said, it's so familiar for me that, uh, that you learn to say no. It's always easy, easy to say yes. And it's always like, no, nah, I cannot say no, because why should I do that? People don't like me. But changing that yes into a no that you say i disagree and i don't do that because and you have a reason for that that make many people who are average make it makes them amazing it goes from good to being great and that's a choice and going back to me uh, i'm a motivational speaker and a success coach for 27 years i was very fortunate to be uh, brought to america by brian tracy when i was 19 years old and I was working for a very big company at that point, and I had to tell in, in Opryland, in Nashville, why I was the number one in the world, 136,000 people in the company. And they told me, you must be a comedian, a public speaker, or an author. Well, I became all. And then I was fortunate enough to work with uh, Tony Robbins and with Zig Ziglar when he was still alive, and with J.T. Fox, and meet amazing people like you, Kobos, and KK, and Petrus, and Pamela. Of course, I didn't meet all of you in person yet, but it's definitely something that's going to happen in the near future. But it's also something, uh, me, as, as being big in real estate and uh, as a business developer, I, I lived in many countries. I lived in Malawi, in Ghana, many years in China, in Thailand, Singapore, in Cambodia. And I set up big companies. And what I always do is I give back. I make millions and I give millions back to the society, and mainly children and old people, because those people have normally not a voice. Old people are being put in an elderly home or not even taken care of. And children, they're all eager and they're all being labeled as being, oh, you're not clever enough or you don't know. If you tell it to an eight-year-old child, they feel that and they absorb that and they think that they are a nobody. And who are we to tell them? Because we are here to help them move forward. So what I'm going to do, uh, not only in South Africa, but before that, I will go to South Korea uh, for two days and talk to, to a few thousand people. Uh, the eighth, I have two days event here in Cambodia. The 24th, I have an event in Cambodia. The 30th, I have an event in Cambodia. And most of these events are free or only covering the expenses. And what I do is I train people who are last year university, young entrepreneurs and people who really have to get that boost to, to recognize the potential and the opportunities in life. And, and I love to do that. And that's the same thing with South Africa. I have so much vision and ideas about South Africa. South Africa is, an, is a beautiful country. I've been there a few times, fortunate. 
And I've seen so many beautiful things and many people, they, they look at the negative side and they see the apartheid and they see the differences. And I don't say, listen, see the opportunities, see the potential and see what we can bring as facilitators for success, happiness and, and a change of mindset. And that's what I'm doing. This is something that has been given to me by God. And that you say like, listen, why not giving back? I cannot spend 10 million at the same time. So why not give back 8 million to society, help people building schools, building facilities that people can have a good job, uh, mm -hmm. doing adapting programs and use 2 million and be happy that I have $2 million. And say, listen, that's more than enough. And this is something that changed your mind. Having 50 million doesn't change my life, but having 2 million and uh, let's say donated $48 million and see a thousand smiling faces for children that their lives will be changed and out of the thousand children, maybe 100 children get a very, very successful job and will do the same thing as what I do right now. I'm 46, almost 47 years old and giving back is the most beautiful thing you can do. And this is what I'm doing in my speaking. I'm an author. I've been published in the New York Times. I'm in Amazon right now. I have 10 books, books published and uh, I have bestsellers. And great, I don't make any money in my books. My books are just covering to, to, to be recognized that people know that you do more. My events, my, uh, my, my speeches are always custom made for what I'm doing and what I want to say. And, and that's great because that's also a gift given to me that I'm very easy. If you ask me to do a speech about the Kilimanjaro and what is all the challenges and whatever, I prepare myself one hour because it's all related back to the same issue, the same point, a mindset, change your mindset, believe in yourself, give it, give it all. Dare to say no, if people say like, okay, you're leader. Listen, no, I'm not ready for that, I will follow because at that point I have to learn. And when I'm learning, I'm evolving. And when I'm evolving, I'm halfway, maybe I'm good enough to say, okay, I'm gonna be in halfway. And in the end, I may be at the top and reach the top at, at first. That's it, you always have to make choices in life. And that's what I like, and again, as you can see, I am a speaker and I'm a guy uh, who also really good at listening, but I love to talk. And if, 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 we, if you don't stop me, in the end you say, listen, this is KK's interview. <laughs> no, 100%. Um, if I can come in there. And then I, I just want to quickly say something. Alex, thank you. Uh, Petrus, thank you. You know, these guys, you ask them to talk about, about the event and, and they, they don't. What they do, the first thing they do is to show their appreciation, to talk about all the, the wonderful things that they're doing. Because we're not just about selling. You know, we are all about making a, a positive difference to our lives. And I know I'm preaching to the choir, you know. And, and just to maybe touch a little bit about the event, you know, some of the things that, that the, uh, the gentlemen are talking about, uh, we're going to truly offer some amazing insights and business strategies, you know, that are going to help people to really start thinking differently if they are going to pursue their own uh, mountains in the future. You know, yes, the, the, the event is called Mind of a Millionaire, but it's all about all of us embracing the fact that we need to become millionaires here first in our minds before, you know, before all the riches and the wealth will come. And what we want is not just about making the money so we can make it rain it's about making the money so we can all make a difference and if you come to that event if you come to the different sessions that we'll be hosting and the different wonderful speakers that we're going to have you're going to learn so much you know one of the things that alex and and, and and beatrice asked me to do is one of the signature things that i do which is to truly help people break boards as, as, a, as a metaphor to help them break through you know to find their breakthrough um and i see some of some of uh, um you know some of my my, my entrepreneurs that I work with uh, on, the, uh, on, the, on the call and literally a few weeks ago, and I'm actually going to share the video, they went through the breaking of the boards as well. It was a, a phenomenal experience and we want to share that with the world. So come to the 26th of May. Um, there's a link that we've just shared with you. Corbus um, is also going to share it with you again. Um, you know, link with us on Facebook. I've also just shared my Facebook link. Follow us over the next few weeks. We're going to be sharing a lot of interesting uh, and motivational and transformational uh, knowledge and information and you know come be with us come spend time with us um you know let's all learn and share with each other but with the you know with, with one with one uh, objective in mind for us to become bigger and better people so we can we can truly change the lives of people out there 100 percent, and thank you for that i know the board break is powerful i did one for net bank the other day 150 nice. people wow. oh, and, and wow. now they just came for some of them the board break was more powerful than walking on fire you know, and, I know what you mean. <laughs> and so, and I would like to put out my, my thing to, and I'm going to give it over to you now, Alexander. Um, for Alexander and Pietrus, if you are willing, I put my details in. I would love to do the same type of interview with you as well. 
um, somewhere awesome. next week or the week after, depending on your schedule. And uh, so please let me know what times you are suited and then we can do that. So, Alexander, I think you wanted to say something. Yeah, that, that, that's correct. And, and again, uh, thank you, KK, uh, to, uh, to, to emphasize almost the humbleness that we all have. Uh, again, the 26th, uh, the, uh, 26th of May, uh, the mindset of a millionaire, again, indeed, is not about being a millionaire, but we want to change people's mindset that they all can become a millionaire. A millionaire is just the way you think. And what we do is not only the 26th, we bring very powerful, down-to-earth methods and, and, and amazing things that will uh, be absorbed by any person, including uh, rich, poor, it doesn't matter where you come from. And what we do next to this is also, after the 26, we are planning to go to universities, to young entrepreneurs associations, and we do this for free. And we just want to help other people also to change their mindset because we want to create like a, a hype. We will come back. This is not a one-off. One this is something we do bigger. And the next time, definitely, Kobus, uh, I'm very open to talk to you about firewalking. I did it a few times in events in South Korea. And I never heard so many women scream and yell and whatever. And, and in the end, when they run over it, they were like flabbergasted and, and, and it's amazing. They, they see you almost as a god. They, they see it that I did it. They said, listen, this is something you did yourself. So this is something we definitely love to include. Uh, when uh, KK sent me the, the video of the, the board breaking, the easiness and, 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 and the power, but then also the relaxation that he brings back to those, those people standing in front of that, that board and have to hit it with their fist. It, it's amazing. And again, these are things I did myself, but when I see it with, with KK done with, with the person, it, it brings back so much energy in that I say, these things we can bring and implement during that one day event. And hopefully even when it's busy enough, we can make it a two day event, but I will be there for at least four or five days going to those other venues like universities, like associations. And we're just sharing the words. We hope to do some radio programs just to show people, listen, some ordinary guys. I fly 14,000 kilometers. I come from Holland, but I'm now living in Cambodia. I will fly 14,000 kilometers to, uh, to, to share my knowledge and, and my commitment to success and happiness with all people. I got a great guy like Petrus. I got an amazing guy like KK. I got a fantastic lady, a beautiful Mrs. Uh, Johannesburg uh, joining us. I got Kobus here. I got a few other people seeing joining, but it's great. And, and this is just the beginning of a movement that we can say like, listen, all of us can be the same. And that means at the top, but we have to commit ourselves and that's drive. If you have a drive to get to that point, we are all here to help you. And if you're willing to open up, if you're coachable, you can reach it. And it's just a smaller journey. If you see that KK said, listen, I did it all by myself. I had people around me. I had a lady, very successful business lady. And you do your own way. And then you hook up and then you move together. It is, it's, it's all, you always have to rely on one person in life. And that's yourself. And then you find a team around you who inspires you and who can help you move forward. And if you've got 50 people, great people, but 48 of these people not moving you forward, but actually always holding you back, you say, listen, you're a great guy, but that's nothing for you. You cannot do it. Cut, cut yourself loose from them because they will hold you back to your dreams. Same thing with you, Kobe. You tell me your joints, not there. Many people say, why do it? Why struggle? Hey, that's something that you need to do. You say that you are ready for getting that journey and getting those, those steps done in life that other people say, Cobus, don't do it. Don't even trouble. Why? I would say, Cobus, go for it. And if you're done with this one, then I'm going to help you train for going to the Mount Everest. You know, you have to be inspired by someone who says, are you serious? Hey, listen, if you conquer that mountain, I'm going to train with you for the Kilimanjaro, for not only the Kilimanjaro, but also the Mount Everest. And maybe I only make it to base camp, but at least I tried it. Yeah. You see, yeah. it's always easy to say no. So this is just what I wanted to add. Sorry. No, that's fine. And I think it's empowering. I think people can learn a lot. And, and thank you for sharing your wisdom. I'm looking forward to uh, doing a whole uh, program with you. Um, and then uh, thank you for Keika. I think those who are watching the share is, um, you know, some of the lessons. Thank you, Keika, for learning us the power of climbing the mountain. That it's up to you and only you. And it's also very important. It's about who you surround yourself with, the team. And I think so far we are looking my team that is climbing, we're looking like a powerful team and especially by Pietras joining as well. <laughs> um, Pietras, yeah, thank you for the thumbs up. Um, so thank you guys. I just want to remind everyone, it's all about you have to have a purpose. Then you have to focus on leadership. Um, it's about leading yourself first. And then what is your value proposition? Not only towards yourself, but towards the, those people supporting you and sponsoring you. 
And then the last thing I think is very important is about building of the right relationships. So I think... Um, and commitment, yeah. And commitment, yeah. That was number five, yeah. So thank you for that. Um, thank you for everyone joining. I think uh, we can close down. Remember, guys, I'm going to send you the link of uh, KK and, then, and Paul and Alexander, of Pietrus and Alexander's event, uh, the Mindset of a Millionaire event. And I'm looking forward to all meeting you. Pietrus, are you coming on uh, Saturday night? Okay, so you're coming on Saturday night. And KK, am I seeing you on Saturday night? Not only are you seeing me, I'm bringing my 14-year-old boy. Um, you know, I, I'm going to help give him, and, uh, give him that experience to learn as young as he is that he can overcome, uh, you know, uh, what, what may be a fearful experience. And I, and I thank you for that experience. Yeah, so Saturday night, if you come, I'm doing a new metaphor called the knife drop. So it's very life-threatening. It's, uh, it's a testing. It's great. Right. I'll be late. <laughs> so that's good. Okay. So yeah. thank you again. Thank you for the time. Thanks, you all enjoy your night. Looking forward to Pietrus and Alexander for the next interviews. Everyone, have an amazing night. Thanks, everyone. Cheers. Good night. Great. Thank you. Cheers, guys.